Well, good evening. Oh, I'm not on. Power. We'll do it good. Good evening and welcome to those online and those who are present here this evening. You should have um, an order of service. You should have been able to find, hopefully online, that looks like this. Um, Christmas Eve, Midnight, Holy Communion. And a carol book, or at least access to some carols. And so we start on page one. A distant star glinting in the indigo sky. Come, Jesus, come. A blazing beacon lighting up the way. Come, Jesus, come. An energizing sun brightening a gloomy day. Come, Jesus, come. We're going to listen to our first carol being sung for us, O Little Town of Bethlehem, which is number 26 in your books if you'd like to follow it. And we're fortunate that Rob and Lydia are going to sing our carols for us this evening. So thank you both very much. So we turn to our booklets again. God, our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. 
Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. And may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today we remember Jesus and the story of his birth. Jesus is our King. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Jesus is our way. With Jesus, even dark places are light. Jesus is the truth. In Jesus, we shall live forever. Jesus is our life. And Andy's going to light our first candle. Thank you. I bring you good news of great joy. A Saviour has been born to you. Alleluia. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Alleluia. And our first reading is Linda. Oh, and Mr. Carroll out. Apologies. <laughs> Hang on, Linda. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, see him lying on a bed of straw, number 30. Now, Linda, would you mind coming and bringing us the reading? The reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 18 to 25, the birth of Jesus. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. 
Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to, to fulfil what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from the sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. We, pr we praise God for his word to us this evening. Thank you, Linda. So we continue on page two. He is Christ the Lord, alleluia. We worship and adore him, alleluia. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can quench. The shepherds kept watch by night and your glory shone round about them. Let your light scatter the darkness and fill your church with your glory. And now um, Lydia and Rob are going to sing for us number 16 in your books. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Thank you.
Jess is going to bring us our next reading. Thank you, Jess. The reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. The Shepherds and the Angels. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. We praise God for his word to us this evening. Thank you, Jess. And so from page three in your booklets. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can quench. The kings followed the star, a light which leads us onwards. The star led the kings to Bethlehem. May the star lead us to the Christ child this Christmas Eve. And so our next carol is number 20 in your books. It came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old. Thank you.
Keith's going to bring us our next reading. Thank you, Keith. The reading is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, and 7 to 12, and is about the visit of the Magi. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who, who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there Ahead of them went the star that they'd been seen, that they'd seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And, having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. We praise God for his word to us this evening. <clears throat> so if you turn to page four. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can quench. The light came into the world to be the source of light for each one of us. We are called to be light in the darkness, help our light to burn bright in the world. Now Andy's going to come bring us an address. Thank you, Andy. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can quench. Now, I want you to cast your minds back, if you can, all the way to a month ago, probably just over a month ago, uh, to November. Um, and obviously, we didn't have our normal fireworks uh, display this year, um, sadly, uh, and there weren't any other displays that we could get to. So instead what we did was I got a small set of garden fireworks and just before the full-blown lockdown uh, my parents came over and we had a small little display uh, in the garden. And while setting up 
I realized that um, I just laid a load of explosives on the garden floor and being the safety conscious person I am, I would need a tool so that I could see the explosives that I had just laid on the floor. So I got my trusty mag light, which I've got here this evening. And what I did, hopefully this will work, is uh, I focused it to its smallest setting, which you might already be at here, so that it didn't cause too much light around me when I was pointing it at the ground. But when I pointed it upwards, and I won't shine it at you, because that might be too much light, um, but when I pointed it upwards, initially, I felt like a character from Star Wars because I had this big, long beam of light coming out of my torch. Then, when my childhood fantasy had subsided, I looked up. And you can't see it in here, but on the night was a beam that was going all the way from my torch, all the way up to the clouds, possibly even in the breaks of the clouds, maybe a little bit beyond that. And that evening, I realized just how powerful light can be. I mean, let's, let's face it, this is not a World War II searchlight. This is a torch that I can hold in the palm of my hand. And it is powerful enough to get up in the sky quite far. And light itself is a very powerful thing. And for instance, you're going to have to entertain my, uh, my interest in astrophysics just for a few minutes. Uh, when we measure the speed of light, we don't do it like we would in miles per hour. We do it in light years. And that's because uh, in physics, if you actually measure the speed of light like you would in miles per hour, the noughts are just extraordinary. They go on for, for a long, long time. Um, in, a, in a very condensed thing, it's a bit more complicated than that, but essentially that's it, lots of noughts. And if we boil it down, light travels at approximately 186,000 miles per second. 186,000 miles per second. It's actually a bit above that, but again, we'll round it down. So light is going some, and a light year is the amount of distance that that light would travel at 186,000 miles per second in a year. I'll just let you sort of get hold of that for a second. It's a long way. I don't know if anybody's got their calculators out. It's a very, very, very long way. Now, one of the largest stars that we know about is uh, called Canis Majoris, uh, which literally, they weren't very creative when they named this one. It literally translates from the Latin as big dog. Canis Majoris is 2,000 light years wide. So, in other words, what that means is if you want to get from one end of this star at its circumference to the other, you have got to travel 186,000 miles per second for 2,000 years. 186,000 miles per second for 2,000 years. It's a very, very, very big star. A very very, very big star. But this is where it gets kind of cool for me. Um, and I like to do this in, uh, some, on some Christmases. If the night sky is clear, I don't think it's that clear tonight because it was raining when I came out. But if you ever do get a clear Christmas Eve, sometimes, or Christmas Day, what, sometimes what I like to do is look up. And I like to look up at the stars. Because if a star is 2,000 light years away, give or take, you're actually looking back in time 2,000 years. When you look up at the night sky, you're not seeing it as it is. You are looking back in time. You are looking back in time. 
So sometimes I look up at the stars on a Christmas and you can see, I like to think that one of those stars, maybe one of them, was as it was 2,000 years ago when Jesus was born. And light is a wonderful thing. It's powerful. It lights the way for us. It lets us see. And in these darker winter months, the houses in our neighbourhoods are transformed by colour and brightness and light. And in those moments, it doesn't just literally brighten our world. In some ways, for me, Uh, and hopefully for many of us here, it brightens our hearts. And in one of the lectionary readings uh, from today, I found it quite interesting as I was uh, reading through, and it was a a reading from Isaiah, uh, one of the prophets. And uh, it was from Isaiah 52, and it's, it's it's the reading that starts, how beautiful are the feet of him on the mountains who brings good news. And as I was thinking of that and that reading, I was thinking what it would have been like in those days to be sat in a city, looking off in the distance and seeing that messenger coming towards those people in those times. It would have been light to their hearts. A messenger bringing Good news would have been light to the people of Israel who were not locked down, but they had certainly had their life, as they know it, taken from them whilst they were in exile. And the people see the light of the messenger in the distance, the one bringing the good news from afar, and it's beautiful. The messenger hasn't even arrived in the city, they're off in the hills, and yet even at that point, the people begin to rejoice. The comfort of the Lord is coming nearer. God is on his way to redeem his people. And in our liturgy tonight, and in the reading that uh, we sometimes have from John's Gospel, we are reminded of Jesus coming to us as the light of the world. The God, the very same God, who created the stars that I was talking about. The God who holds that massive star in the palm of his hands. That very same God, the source of all light and all creation came to us as a child in humility. Not to condemn us, but to bring that light to our hearts. A light that we begin to share with one another. A light in the darkness, a city on a hill for people to see. God came as Jesus, as the messenger bringing good news, so that we too might become messengers to take good news to others. Both the shepherds and the wise men were transformed by light. The shepherds saw the glory of the angels. The wise men followed a star. They saw the good news, the light of the world, as a baby, humble and small. But in that baby, they saw something that transformed them. And they went out and they took that light and they spread it to those nearby. And as we fast forward to this year, 
it has been dark in many ways. 2020 has not been an easy year, but as we have proclaimed several times this evening, darkness cannot quench uh, the light of the world. Jesus is a light that cannot be quenched. The English theologian Thomas Fuller famously said that the night is darkest before the dawn and the dawn is coming. We might not see it yet, but it is. And this Christmas, let us bring, let God bring light to our hearts and let us become a part of that dawn choir that takes it to others. Corrie ten Boom, the famous Dutch Christian who hid many Jews during the Second World War, said this, when a train goes through a tunnel and it gets dark, you don't throw away the ticket and jump off. You sit still and you trust the engineer. And the good news for us today is that the dark tunnel we find ourselves in, in that dark tunnel, God isn't just the engineer, and he is, but he is also the light at the end of that tunnel. God with us. God who came to bring us light and life. And when he arrives, let us rejoice like we've never rejoiced before. Light, it's a very powerful thing because the light of the world, the source of it all, is God himself. Amen. Thank you, Andy. Um, and Zoe's going to lead us in our prayers. Thank you, Zoe. To the words, God in your mercy, please respond to hear our prayer. Let's pray. As the waiting of Advent comes to an end, we rejoice that Jesus came as a baby, identifying with both our joys and sorrows. However, we have experienced this unusual year. May we know that there is hope. God, in your mercy, hear us. Healing God, we pray for the world that has seen COVID-19 causing so much pain, both directly for those who have died or are suffering, to those in our health service treating them, and to families and friends who can't see loved ones, and indirectly for those who have lost livelihoods, not been able to access services, and those who've had to shield for large chunks of time. Lord, we cry to you to help us at our point of need. Give wisdom to those who are working on vaccines and more effective treatments, and also to those in power whose decisions lead to positive or negative outcomes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too for those who are waiting for operations or treatment for things other than COVID. Give them your peace and be with those treating them. We pray for those in care homes unable to see friends and family. May they know that they're loved. We pray that you give strength 
to all who are working in care homes and hospitals and that you would refresh all te teaching staff who have kept schools open as much as it was safe to do so. God, in your mercy. Loving God be with all those who are suffering mentally, spiritually or emotionally. For those who are isolated or lonely, feel stuck in a place they don't want to be, or even that they don't want to be here anymore. We thank you for people who visit or call the lonely, and we thank you for organisations like Chess and Sanctus who help the homeless. Give us compassionate hearts and help us to be sensitive and patient in all our interactions and communications with others. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, help us to be good stewards of all that you've created for us. Bless those protecting our forests, oceans and wildlife and for those who are trying to make use of our re renewable resources. We pray for a fair distribution of resources without corruption or exploiting the vulnerable so that no one would have to go hungry. God, in your mercy, hear yeah. our yeah, prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all those who are persecuted for their faith in you, wherever they are in the world. May they know your love and power in their lives. And may all the leaders of your church walk close to you and to all who are celebrating Jesus' birth, rejoice safely. God, in your mercy. Comfort, Lord, all those who mourn the death of a loved one. We pray especially for the families of Dell, Pat Deal, David Brown, Barbara Oxford, Vi, Andy Clifford, Michael Barker and Beryl of our congregations who have died this year and to all others known to us. God, in your mercy. Amen. And Father, as we celebrate this time of your birth, we pray that you'd help us to be light in the darkness. And as we get our hope from you, Father, may we be beacons of hope to those in our communities. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Zoe. And we join together in saying the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's our offertory hymn, but we don't take up an offertory at the moment. If you want to leave a gift, then you can in the plate at the back, um, or you can um, give online if you'd like to. We're going to enjoy, it came upon a midnight, no we're not, we're going, to enjoy, we're going to enjoy, come and join the celebration. It's a very special day. <laughs>
Um, so I'm going to try this one. <coughs> page five. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus your Son to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Father, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. <laughs> the crowds came out to see your son. Yet at the end, they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread.
so we join together in our prayer after communion. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Amen.
you very much indeed. So on uh, today now, 10 o'clock, do join us if you'd like to for a Christmas service at Church of the Holy Spirit. Um, but uh, obviously most people will join us online and uh, we look forward to seeing you um, then. Have your presents ready uh, and perhaps between us we can work out what you've got and uh, that should be quite fun. On um, Sunday the 27th, the same applies that um, the church will be open for communion at 9.30 here at St, at St Mary's um, and most people will probably be online so it will be open for people who would like to come. Thank you for joining us today and we come to our blessing. God sent his angels from glory to bring you good news to the shepherds. You have heard his story, the story of God's own son. May he fill you with joy to bring this good news to others today. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and all those you love this Christmas time.